Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for September 7th of 2022. Well, it is titled Tarantula Stars R136 from Webb. So what do we see here? Well, we're actually going to see two images from the James Webb Space Telescope. And the Webb Space Telescope looks primarily in infrared light. So it is sensitive to the longer wavelengths of visible light, uh, red and orange colors. But most of its work is done in the infrared, in other words, in wavelengths that we cannot see directly. However, they still, of course, can be, be imaged by detectors and converted into a format that we can see. Now, in our first image here, what we are seeing is part of the Tarantula Nebula, uh, which is a great star forming region located in the Large Magellanic Cloud, a nearby satellite galaxy of our own Milky Way. R136 is the star cluster that we see down towards uh, the lower center of the image. And it is a newly forming star cluster and we see some of the very biggest and hottest stars known to exist in the universe. And those are extremely large, sometimes up to 50 100 times the mass of our own sun, reaching the limits of how big a star can physically be, as there is an upper limit to the largest size of a star, as our current understanding eventually, if you get too massive of a star, it'll produce enough energy that the outer layers will be pushed off, it won't be able to gather any more material. And there is an upper limit to how big a star can be. You can't just make stars bigger and bigger. So we're seeing some of those largest ones here in this detailed image from the Webb Space Telescope. And we see that cluster. In addition, we see some of the gas and dust around the nebula as well. Now, as I said, there are two images here, and I will move over to switch to the second image. And this is also looking in infrared light, but a much longer wavelength of infrared. So for much further away, the first was what we would call near infrared, very close to the visible part of the spectrum. And this is a much longer wavelength. Now as you go back and forth between the two, you will note that there are some differences. First of all, the first image is a much higher resolution. And that is because of the wavelengths. The amount of resolution we get out of a telescope depends on the size of a telescope, but it also depends on the wavelength of the light we observe. Observe. The longer wavelengths will get poorer resolution. So we see less detail in this image. But again, we're still getting a picture of it. And what we notice is that the stars seem to have disappeared. Well, they're not, they're still there. They just emit far more of their light in that near infrared. So they appear much brighter there. They are not emitting as much light in the far infrared of the second image, and therefore they are much harder to see. We can still see the remnants of the cluster there. All those stars are still there in both images. It's just at different wavelengths, different things give off the light. You'll note that the gas in some place, gas and dust are high, more highly illuminated, and you can actually see more details in some of those. Some of the gas and the dust will emit longer wavelength because of its lower temperature. So it'll be giving out light prominently here. So we use those different wavelengths to be able to stu study different aspects of this part of the sky. So that was our picture of the day for September 7th of 2022. It was titled Tarantula Stars R136 from Webb. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture. So until then, have a great day everyone. And I will see you in class.